the person has done, that this will give you a ballpark idea, but without seeing firsthand how your home fit, you know, basically scores in the spectrum of homes that are right. within this CMA, the the value that we're coming that you may have uh, that you may think your home is worth is still a rough estimate. Okay, so let's do this. Take take two minutes, a minute and a half, and just read read the uh, the article I gave you on what a CMA or AVM is. So it's just about having the right information and the right knowledge, and knowing what information and knowledge the person you're talking to has. Just let me know because um, this is part of the learning process. Really quick, you're really close. Yep. Because I mean, in the beginning of the conversation, whether you find or physical, you haven't done your research, right? Right. So here's here's a remember. Here's another big complex that Brian's going right into. Go ahead. And then they ask. Sometimes they do get stuck on the price. Right. They, they they ask you, well. Sincerely, they ask you, well, what's the best price that you're willing to offer? That's and what they're asking you? Right. Okay. And, you know, I just, I just feel that, well, you, you listed it at whatever price, how did you get to that? But I'm really not addressing your question. But what is, you see, this is what I'm saying. You guys have to understand what pricing is. What is the price of a home? The buyer and seller agree. What the buyer is willing to pay? And the seller's willing to accept. Okay, so we have several different answers. Mm -hmm. Someone said what the bank is willing to finance. Yep, it's what kind of price is that? It's just the appraised value. Yeah, so which, what kind of value is that, though? The bank is doing a risk assessment, right? right. So, they so is it possible that the bank is willing to lend a certain amount of money, but people are willing to pay more money yes. than that? Yes. Is it possible the bank's willing to lend a certain amount of money, but people aren't willing to pay for that? Yes. Sure. So is that the price? It's a particular price. What's what's the fair market value price? How much people are willing to pay? Right. Well, that's what the bank that the appraisal is, right? What's the market price? What, uh, whatever shows that is currently recently sold in the area. What you said. What somebody, what, what somebody's willing to pay for. Right. So we have what someone's willing to pay for it, but not not what they're necessarily willing to pay for, but what they're willing to pay for and what they can afford to pay for it. Somebody might be willing to pay a lot more money for a property, but they might be able to afford to pay it. Have you ever seen that scenario? I'm sure you see it all the time, whatever, Chai. They won a $900,000 house, but they can only afford a $650,000 house. Well, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but so is price. So for the most part, it yeah, is. So it I is. tell somebody in terms of um, yes and no on that one. Right. Well, that's what, but that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're mastering the threads on the pricing. But that goes back into the appraisal. But that's what they're valuing, you know? That's one. value is what somebody Well, you have, so you, have, you have multiple types of values. You have, in, what about insurable value? What an insurance company is willing to value a home at if it burns down or has to be rebuilt? See, so it's, it's, an, it's an opinion, but it's based on what type of, uh, what is the use of the value of, that's right. being determined. Exactly. So you're talking about what's, what's a full price offer? What is, what did you say? What's your offer? What did they tell you? What's, what's the offer they can do? Okay. So you have to understand that they don't understand how pricing works, and neither do you guys. So if you are able to master this, you're able to have a conversation without even knowing the price. You just have to know how, how, do you, how do you arrive at a price. How do you arrive at a price? Have you, you sell shoes. I don't know if you, how much you negotiate, right, at the, at the yard sale, but that's where I started. I started off in the flea markets and I started off at garage sales. 
and uh, learning the value about what people are willing to pay, what people are willing to sell. If I could buy something that someone was willing to sell for really cheap and I already knew I had someone that would buy it for a lot more money, maybe this person didn't know how valuable it was or they didn't know how to find the person that would pay top dollar for it. And maybe they just didn't care. Or maybe they didn't know. A lot of times, people have a lot of valuable things, but they don't know how valuable they are, so they sell them really cheap. Right? So it's just a matter of how value works. If someone says, well, what's, what's, the, what's the, top, the full price value you're going to want to offer? You have to learn how to use the questions to get to that price. So you have two options. You have several options. Number one, when you had your house on the market, how many offers did you get? Because let's, let's value, let's take a look at what you already had it valued for. So the question is, the price that you had, did that work? How do you know if a price works? So you had there you go. So supply, demand, and, and, and then so you can start to find a barometer, right? Mm -hmm. This is how you can oversell an overpriced listing. This is how you can determine how to, this is how you can create a bidding war. If a house is really worth $700,000, Marketplace, according to, okay, look at, look at, thread it up on pricing. Market price. Underneath market price, we have supply and demand. How do you know if supply and demand is working? Supply and demand will drive the number of offers and the price of the offers. And people are willing to Right, or they'll pay more than the appraisal price, yeah, which I had. I've actually had that happen, yeah, right? Too. Market price, supply and demand, drives the number of offers and, and price of offer. So if someone says, uh, "No, this is just the price that I fill my home," this is, is this is an expired, and they didn't get any offers, then we're talking about what does the market say the house is worth? Less than what you were asking. Right. So this is a conversation you have to have. I, I did get to that point. Right. So they would say, oh, I mean, I got, I got four offers at whatever price. Right. But then they say, it's been a year now, so how much is it worth now? Okay. And then that's, that's, so, that's okay, so you hear where we're at? How much is it worth now? How are you going to show them what the house is worth? Bring in costs. Right. You've got to bring in the market stats that support the value. Okay? Is this making sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. Right. So you guys have to understand the appraisal, the market price, the opinion, and the AVM. Did you guys finish reading the AVM? Okay, let's finish reading that. Once you guys can do this, you're going to make a lot of money. Has anybody taken a, a listing here and it didn't sell, it actually expired? You did? Why did it expire? Because uh, you had too many amenities. Oh, it had too many amenities. Oh, wow, that's a good one. And uh, the, all the other properties around there were selling for less. Money. So, what are you really saying? Too much price. Well, <laughs> See, this is a problem. You have, when you guys really understand finance and you understand um, even investors, and it's not, it's not you, everybody does this. Even investors lie to themselves when they're calculating what they think the numbers are going to be. Right? They'll leave out things, they'll miscalculate because they want to say, I did a good job, I was smart, or they just want to make it work so bad, right? Well, there was, this was an investor who actually put too much money on the house because he thought that in Newport Beach, you know, for the area, he wanted to attract people with a lot of money, but he just went above and beyond putting all the different type of things, you know. So he overbuilt He overbuilt. Market, yeah. He overbuilt which the is, whole thing. Yeah. There was no way. To right. We advised against it, but he went ahead and did it. Okay. So you, but oh, here we go. So you advised against it. How did you advise him? Well, we told them there was no requirement because we look at the at the market. Right. We look at the other houses around the area, 
and for all the things that he wanted to put in there, it was going to be too much. He said, look, you're not going to make hardly any money out of it, and what you're going to basically you're going to price yourself out of the market. That's what you're actually doing. You know? But he didn't listen, right? He didn't listen. Right. Okay, so... Well, that's what we're get, that's what we're going into, right? But it's not that's why it's not about the script. It's about understanding what you're doing and understanding how this works. Did you guys finish it? What did you see? What was the major thing in there that you see with the ABM? The biggest problem that gives you the biggest advantage. Just in the if you just read the disadvantage section. They don't take it. It's all one. Yeah. And they don't take into consideration. The person may be doing themselves a disservice, you know, in terms of uh, their perception of value. Right. Simply because they've lumped everything into one general basket. And it's also dependent on uh, someone manually going in and entering the upgrades. That's true. That's true. So how... If someone says, I got my, uh, my price from Zestimate or online. How could you begin to destroy that argument? Using a question. Remember that the whole sales process is about questions. It's not about telling. Do you understand telling. how Zillow generates their value? Do you understand how they arrive at, let's say, the value of your property? Okay. That's a good one. And they're, well, you know, and then at that point you proceed to tell them that they're they're basically lumping everybody into the same category without taking into consideration. Right, right, property. right. But remember, it's not about it's not about being lengthy and wordy. It's about the question. How can you take what you're trying to say and turn that into a question that would say all that for you? Do you know the difference between estimate and an actual appraisal? That's a good one, right? Chris, come up here. And Marjorie. I want you guys to study the FISBO workbook because in there I'm teaching you guys how to argue like lawyers how to build a case, how to destroy the arguments. Do you know the difference between... What did you say? Appraisal and what? And it's estimate. All right. See, so if you get the right questions, you can turn your whole sales conversation around by just using questions. The ad, you can turn the people's attitude around just by using the right questions. Okay? All right, so Chris, you call Marjorie. Come on up to the front. Chris is going to call Marjorie, and you're going to do your intro, and I want you to ask her, how did you come up with the price? And then you're going to give her an opinion, or you saw it online, or something that's opinion-based, okay. like Zillow or whatever. Okay. Let's try this out. Okay. Um, we're doing expireds from the very beginning? Sure. Okay. Uh, uh, ring, ring. Hello. Hi. Um, is this Marjorie? Yes. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm calling about your property at 123 Main Street. Is this uh, property still available or have you uh, sold it yet? No, it's available. Okay. Um, what what uh, price were you asking for your property? 652 Okay. And I'm wondering if you had any... Uh, offers on your property? Um, you know, when it was listed, I had two offers. Okay, and what was the reason that you didn't accept either of the two offers? I felt that they were below um, value. I just felt that my house was worth more. Oh, uh, what were the offers, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, um, 640 and 637. Okay. And now, where did you come up with the, the price of 652 that you had it listed at? Um, well, a combination of things. The uh, agent who listed the property felt confident that they could get 652 for it. And um, 
just in my own due diligence, looking on Zillow and uh, Realtor.com and so forth, and comparable properties, I felt that 652 was a reasonable number. Okay, okay. let's pause right here, okay? Just to teach you a little bit about uh, argumentation. Did you, I heard so many different things that you could just start destroying right away. But let me just read this to you guys. Uh, let's see here. And I've given you plenty of fodder. <laughs> Argument. Argument is often used to mean heated or emotional exchange. Argument here is just the opposite. Arguing with pure logic or argumentation is a fine art that has been refined over many centuries. Okay? Uh, let's see. A reason given for or against a matter under discussion. A coherent series of reasons, statements, or facts intended to support or establish a point of view. Making an argument. Now, and also, I want you to remember, whenever someone says something, ask them to clarify what they're saying. Right? Because you can't attack something if you don't understand what they're saying or if they're very vague. You haven't locked them down into anything. You haven't really put anything forth, which is called a premise. Okay? One of the first things to consider when building an argument is the structure. Okay? So, like a house of cards, or like a house, if it's well structured, it will withstand a few flaws in detail. However, if you build with a deck of cards, even a gentle breeze will blow it down. Arguments are the basis of persuasive communication. They are combinations of statements made that are intended to change the minds of other people. All arguments have structure which can be either deliberately designed or may be discovered through analysis. But at its simplest, an argument has a premise and conclusion. So when we say, well, how did you come up with the price? Whatever they say is the premise. It's something that they're putting forward that they want you to agree with or to believe. That's the very beginning of building something in someone's mind of reality or an understanding or an agreement, right? Um, the lady that, who was here on Thursday? The lady that Avi called about the physical Oh, yeah, ball? geez. <laughs> Did she, she gave a strong premise. She was given somebody trying yeah. to throw out facts and trying to give out opinions right. and why my house trying is worth this and, and the flooring yeah. and all this stuff and I have the biggest shard. So these were all premises, mm -hmm. right? Once you understand what someone's doing, then you can understand how to challenge it. Okay? But if you don't, if you believe what they're saying, then they're persuading you, they're changing your mind because it sounds so plausible. definitive. Right, so it's plausible, it sounds definitive, it sounds concrete, it sounds like it's hard to defeat, it's hard to break, right? A premise is an, of an argument is something that's put forward as a truth, but which is not proven. Although it is not proven, it is assumed to be true. Okay? So let's just go back here. You said, how did you come up with the price? Mm -hmm. What'd you say? What'd you say? I said, realtor, when they listed the property, felt that that was a good number. Okay, so let's listen to this. The realtor, when they listed the property, felt that that was a good number. Okay, my next question was going to be, did they do an appraisal, or right. did they run CMAs for you, or was that strictly their opinion? No. Okay. So, but we're challenging the premise. Okay. Okay. See, this is how you, if you don't, if you let someone continue to build and keep stacking, you don't challenge it. So you nip them in the bud. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because okay. it's like, just because you're putting that forward doesn't mean that it's true. So you say, oh, okay, well, you know, a realtor gave me, this is what they felt the number was true. Okay, great. What are the comparables that support that value that they gave you? What market stats support that that is a strong value for your home that's going to actually cause it to sell in the marketplace? What does that do to the argument when you ask questions like that? It kills it, right? Mm -hmm. Diffuses them. That's all you got to do. Boom, boom. So boom. at the time that it's, you basically present your your premise, then you shoot it down at that. You kill it right at that point. Well, you at least challenge so, it. Uh, challenge it rather right. than letting me kind of give her a whole litany. Oh, I did my own due diligence. I right. looked on Zillow. Blah blah blah. Rather than let me build my argument, yes. you nip me in the bud. Mm -hmm. Start okay. Especially if they keep stacking. So okay. the more that they stack... You start knocking the building blocks down. Exactly. So here you go. 
Okay. If you are making an argument, you should be ready to defend any of your own premises. The more complex the premise, the more opportunity there is to challenge it. So if you expect to challenge, keep your premise both short and non-controversial. So she gave all these different things, these complex premises, which is it's making it easier and easier to knock them down because they're built on fallacies anyway. Right? That's slippery slope is what they call it. Okay? So let's do it again. But this is the answer to your question, Brian. Yeah. You just basically challenge their idea of what they think the price is. And then if they say, well, well, you tell me. You're the expert, then you just set the appointment. Why don't I come in for five minutes, five to ten minutes meet with you, and show you the facts of exactly how homes get sold. And then you know what to come in. Come up with your same menu. And you have to break it up. But you have to understand all the different components of what makes the market move. Okay? So let's try to get it. This is the real work. You have to not only understand how it works, but you have to ask the question that makes them answer the question that you're asking and destroy their own argument. That's the difficult part of what I'm teaching you guys. Okay. But through practice, we'll get it. You guys will get it. <laughs> ring, ring. Hello. Hi, Marjorie, this is Chris. I'm calling about your property at 123 Main Street. Are you still accepting offers or has the property been sold? Uh, sadly, I it did not sell, so yeah, I am still accepting offers. Okay. Um, what would be the uh, best price that you would be willing to accept? Uh, well, you know, I probably the the price that I had it listed at six fifty. Okay. And how did you come up with that price? Uh, the realtor that uh, I engaged presented that price. Okay. And did he present? Um, CMAs or an appraisal to back up that estimate? He presented a CMA. How many? Well, one CMA with a number of pro similar properties <laughs> to mine. Right. So you have to really know what you're saying because when you don't know what you're saying, you sound silly. I'm thinking of one. Right. So just like when we listened to that call for that $7 million call, right, they sounded really silly because they didn't know what they were asking really silly questions, right? Correct verbiage. Right. Correct verbiage. That's why I tell you guys, when you go, the higher price you go up, the sharper you have to be, the more intelligent you have to be, because they are that intelligent, that's why they're up there. Right? If you're talking to someone 300,000, 400,000, they're probably not going to be that sharp. But you get to a million, two million, three million, you better be, be prepared. Okay? Okay, so let's, but this is, this is what I want you guys to work on. You guys are going to work on destroying the arguments. So if someone says, okay, the, my realtor, recommended that this was the price that the home would sell for, or if they say, I looked online and I looked at what homes were going for, okay, great. What are the addresses of the, of the comparable that you used? What are we doing when we ask that question? You're shaming the devil. Making tell the truth. Truth. <laughs> well, we're making the show, yeah. we want to see Facts. your evidence. Yeah, exactly. We want to see your evidence that supports your claim. You guys getting this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you're saying that you looked around and you're supporting your value, so how are you supporting your value? That means you're going to out. No, I'm asking Ludi, because if they say that, they will go say that. Okay. Yeah, so they will say that. What will they say? I should agree with you. We should go with sold here. Yeah. But you're, you're saying you, you looked around in the marketplace and you said based on what homes are selling for, so I'm asking what homes did you compare your house to? Yeah, one that's sold here. Great, what's the address? Yeah, but they don't have the addresses. Trust me, they do have the addresses when they do know. There's there's people that know the neighbors, they know what the houses are sold for, and they've been inside the houses. So either they do know or they don't know. And how can you tell if they do or they don't know? When they tell you. Well, if you ask them. And they'll tell you. Like, oh, this person knows This person knows the addresses. They've been inside the house. They know the neighbors. They know the story. They've watched the house sell several times. They know what the last owner did, the upgrades and all that stuff, right? Or they don't know, and they're just throwing things out into the air. Yeah. You see? And how normally they will know, because we have some neighbors that they will bust every other house. If you have any opinion, they're like, right. they will be going to But this is, this is discovery. This is how we discover if we're talking to... Someone who knows what they're talking about, 
And we also know if we're talking to someone that's our ideal perfect client profile. Okay? So, let's continue. Let's continue. Because this is how we're going to start to destroy the arguments. You destroy the argument with powerful questions. You can really only ask powerful questions if you understand how each of these things work. So now we understand how the automated, uh, the ABMs work, the automated value model. Uh, the RPO, yeah, auto automated valuation model. Model, right? How that works, and we know that it's flawed because it can't make specific comparisons that a person can do, which is why bank stones They're use all them. all fruit, not an apple or an orange. Right. Okay, so you can destroy the arguments and say, um, does, do banks use ABMs to lend money? Yeah. Do banks use Zestimate to determine the value of the home and lend money based on that? Would people know that when you're calling? Probably. Of course. Yeah. They bank it of course. When they bought the house, did they use a Zestimate for the bank to lend them a house? Because they have to pay for the appraisal most times, so they know what the appraisal is. If they, you know. Right? Well, why don't we have they use what? They might look at it, but they don't use it as a final determination. Here's a lender right here. Let's get through. Streamlines and home equity line of credits, they'll ABM it because they're basing it off of what visual credit you have. But whenever there's a brand new transaction, it, for most like big banks, like Bank of America, stuff like that, and Wells Fargo, they have to sell their deals. So they'll always use those visuals because they have to show it to the investor when they sell it. Right. And when it comes down to it, the actual appraisal is more detailed. In an actual algorithm because it doesn't have the ability to make those fine adjustments. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they do have algorithms that can determine, like, map out areas and coordinates and stuff, but it just can't do what a, a, real, a real person can do, okay? So let's keep going. So, yeah, they presented uh, a uh, CMA, and um, that's how the realtor arrived at the and the CMA was based on how many properties. Even I don't remember. All right. So All you got I know is the number sounded very attractive. We got that. What do you want to say? I would say, um, how recent was it? Okay, I think it was, uh, pardon, at the time that they listed the house, so, right? Yeah. So what I want you guys to understand is that if something is true, then what it must mean that it must represent something in the marketplace. If, if someone says, well, uh, you know, the market's hot right now and, and homes are, are appreciating and they're selling, then it would, how would that show up in the marketplace? It would show on sold homes and it would show the prices are going up, right? Which would be the comparison. Okay. But if someone is saying that and their home is not selling or it's not appreciating like they think it should, if they're saying that, then if, if it's not reflected in the marketplace, then what they're saying is false. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So if someone is saying, uh, well, we had a CMA done, right? Now, just because you have a CMA, does it still mean that you can price it right? No. What if you can't read the CMA correctly? Right. You see how there's so many detail, uh, so many flaws and potential flaws in details? Right. The right? market ultimately is going to drive, you know, so at that point, would the next question be, well, how many offers did you get? Right. Right. But when you're asking the question, you have to know, like, what the, what's the setup? So if we ask them that question, what are we setting them up for? Reality. Okay. Right. right? So we say, well, how many offers did you get? So let's ask them that. How many offers did you get? How many offers did you get? Two. Um, and what were the offers? Uh, 637 and 642. Okay, so where should we go from here? Why do you think those are Yeah, we're going to talk. You attack the question and say, being that it, you got offers at 637 and 642, would you, wouldn't you think, would you think that your value might have been, or you set your price a little too high? That could be, but this is what I'm saying. We have to ask questions and we have to think about them, right? That's a potential way to go. Like you but if you ask that down. question, wouldn't they come back and say, no, that's what I think my house is worth? Okay, but what determines what the house is worth? So they're they're for it. Well, I understand. No, no, but, but you need, like what somebody could come back to you right, with. Right. Right. Okay. But you have to still understand what, what is it. They just don't understand how this works. And the reason why you bring that up is because 
then you can have the argument of bringing in supply and demand and you know price being too high and not getting as many eyes on it versus lowballing it, getting a whole bunch of other individuals to create a bidding war. So it depends on what avenue you want to take and what angle you want to take. But when you ask that question, it kind of helps you identify if it was priced too high, and that's why you get that reviewers. What if I were to spend five minutes with you, go over the comparables, and let's just see if we can see how many people can do it at this price range. Right? So that's one direction. So remember angles. What are angles? You guys remember what angles are? Why? What's an angle? Exactly. So an angle is the way that you approach an obstacle or a challenge or um, something that you're trying to uh, get over, right? Approach. It's how, it's how you approach. An angle is how you approach it. So what we're talking about is different approaches. These are different angles, right? Okay. Okay. See you later. Get off. All right. Get in. <laughs>
200K. There we go. Why is this number important? Because it allows them, you to get paid and also sufficient proceeds that they can move forward in whatever objective they may have. Exactly. Once you understand this and you start hearing certain things, you can already kind of figure out what the situation is. If somebody has three, four offers that are kind of close to the price, but they, they say that they, they, they need that price, that will tell you a lot of information. If somebody has $350,000 in equity, they only need about one fifty to accomplish their goal, they can pay you the commissions, and the price comes in close, and there's several different offers. And they're motivated, and they need there's time constraints, and they need to move. Do you think there would be an issue with them taking it? No. Do you think that they'd say, oh, well, I have to have this price? No. So in that last scene, um, when she was looking at some of the offers, she said, I got permission. So why wouldn't you accept that after the last three offers of all the issues? Well, that's where they started to go, right? Yeah. But you, that's kind of, you have to. You have to sharpen up the question. Yeah. But now we're thinking in the right direction. If you can also, if somebody comes along, why wouldn't, you know, well, because I didn't want to. You know, I mean, somebody yeah. could get shirky. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what are they really trying to accomplish because it all starts way back when they first decided to sell their house, right? It's the second right angle. Nobody just sells their house without a specific purpose. We want to know why did they sell the house? What are they trying to accomplish? Because a lot of times what they're trying to accomplish is not the smartest way to accomplish it and they start inflating the price of their house based on what they think they need to do to accomplish the end goal. Yeah. Well, a lot of people, too, they, they anticipate the chisel factor that, oh, I'm going to price it way high because I'm going to get chiseled by the buyers. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they have a price that they need. Yeah. Right? And if you can help them discover what that price is and what they need to accomplish it, you won't waste your time because you'll know if they have plenty of money to accomplish it. The yeah. And then they can actually listen to what your strategy is because they can see that you understand it better than they do. What's the real argument? The real argument is who knows more about real estate at the end of the day. Expired and FISBO, whether they know it or not or whether you know it or not, the real argument is who knows more about real estate and how to make the transaction work and close. All right? Brian, come on up. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me your name again. Yep. Did you stop coming to class? I forgot. No, I asked for that. Uh, what did you say? Say it louder. I said, well, you said 652, right? Or 650. Well, you say 650. Yeah. on the second And you said 642. So is that $8,000 actually going to make a difference between you going to your next house or your next rent? Or do you actually need that money? What's that extra $8,000 going to do? That's a great question. But you see what we're doing? We're using logic. Like, is that actually a deal breaker? And it's still not accomplish your goal with over eight thousand dollars. Yeah, we can adjust minor things here and there. Like your yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's possible. So get that's powder. That's possible. Get powder. Because people always ask, they always have their hands in their pockets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's actually to help them, then yeah. But if it's they're just bullshit, then you're not helping. Right. No, I mean, but yeah. they they always ask, you know, yeah. okay, well, Definitely. yeah, I think for you to say it's my money, were you willing to discount? Well, but just remember, money. though, it's not about the money. It's about what they want to accomplish. Exactly. With the money. Okay? So this exercise is not about having the perfect argument. It's about learning how to argue. Okay? All right. So, Brian, you called Nazareth. You're going to be an expired. Okay? Because, see, oh, remember, you guys aren't, you don't want the deal from them. You just want to see if it is an equitable, motivated deal with time constraints that will close. So this question is just designed to figure out if you're if you have something that you can close or is it something that 
You don't want to waste time with. Okay, let's try it. So if he's um he's an expired? Yeah, if he's an expired. He's an expired. Uh, what's he selling? This word Sudan price. Price. Yeah. Right. Okay. Hi Ned, this is Brian. I was talking about your house and what you three mean. You get a couple of it or you can take them off. Um, I took it off the market. Let me see. If I brought you a full price off, would you take it? If you can bring it out, one point two five. One point two five. Let me ask you, how did you come up with that price again? Well, appraisal. The price came. Oh, you had an appraisal done. Yeah. Uh, when was that? Uh, that was done back in January. January. It's December now, so it's been eleven months. So you know an appraisal is only good for about six months, right? But the price is actually going up, though. So I'm thinking about putting it back in the market. It's been going up. Um, which houses have you seen that's, that's been selling higher? Uh, the houses around the area. Uh, which, which one exactly? I want to look it up. What's the address? What's the address? I want to know. I want to check it out myself. Uh, you can go to, I think there's one right down the street. I mean, do you have my, my, my address to my house? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, did you look at the properties around the area? Sure. You know what they're going for? See, he turned it around on him. Yeah. You can't yeah. let that happen. Yeah. You lost mm -hmm. control. He turned it around. He snuck it around on you. Mm -hmm. See, you were qualifying him, and he turned it around, and he started asking you. So you have to catch you this. Up, and then the words, you know, it's like, don't you know? You shouldn't have better Yeah, but it's because you let you weren't strong enough. You weren't strong enough on that. You were asking questions, but they weren't strong enough. And then he saw what you're doing, and he turned it around on you. You see? Did you guys catch that? Yes. Yeah. So you have to be prepared. Remember, we did the flow charts, right? You have to be prepared for what all possible responses. So if we say, what are the addresses? Right. That should be like a given. No, if they say, um, you know, well, I don't know the addresses, or, or do you know, right? Yeah. You can say, you know what, I can, uh, yes, I do. I'm the market, ex I, the market expert. Mm -hmm. I can come by and bring you all the factual data. Right. Okay? Now, but let me ask you a question. If the actual market data supports a lower number, are you willing to sell at what it's going to sell for? Bingo, that's the, that's the key. Yeah, that's the key. Yeah. And so he'll say yes. No, he won't. He will no, say no still because he's arguing. Unless he believes, remember, he might think that he needs that price to accomplish his end goal, or he just might not be motivated. Mm -hmm. This is how we're going to find out if they're motivated or not. But actually, he, he would know that I was already motivated because I mentioned to him that I was planning on putting back in the market. But that's not, is that motivation? No, that's not motivation. He's not motivated. Okay, so let's get specific about what motivation is. What's motivation? We talked about this last week. Uh, moving out of state. Okay, so here we go. See, this is the whole thing. If you don't, if you're not clear about what these things mean, you start chasing the wrong thing. If you say, if you ask somebody, are you motivated to sell your house? And they say, yes. Does that mean they're motivated? No. no. What does motivation look like? When do you have to sell by? Are you moving out of town? Why are you selling? Right? They have to sell? What do you say, Ludi? Time constraints? Time constraints. Now we're getting more closer to what motivation looks like. So, right? Time constraint, right? Job transfer. Ill family, running out of time, dying family members. Baby on the way, we talked about baby on the way, stairs, not having enough space. Running out of time. This is what, this is how you get the procrastinator. You let time collapse on her. Baby on the way. What about school districts? School, the new school coming up, the new school time frame, right? They have to be moved in to be registered in a new school district. That's a big one. So a lot of parents care about that more than the house. Right. Lots of jobs. Lots of jobs, right? So, but how do you go about asking like those type of questions? You know, you just gotta build up on it, right? Well, yeah. This is this because is why this is why we're developing what 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 
do we need to know? And what are we looking for? You ask questions based on that. Mm -hmm. Why are you selling? That's number one. Yeah. Why are you selling? Right. Is there a specific time that you need to sell your house by? Well, yeah. Maybe. But you have to know what you're looking for. So well, you have to know which questions they're asking. You have to know what to do with the questions. What about, uh, is your house ready to be you know, shown? Well, these are all different questions. We are, we have to, you, have to, you have to test them out. Once you have a question, then you have to actually put it into practice and see what the result is, right? But let's just keep going right here. Okay. Okay. So do you want me to stay in the pricing angle? Or is yeah. That, I would just go out. I would just say when you say... Okay, let's go back and just do what you're going to do. Right, so, so they can yeah. see. Yeah. So what are the uh, addresses again? I don't know. Then you know about the addresses? I mean, you know the address of my house, right? Yeah. You know what? I can look that up. So... If we brought you an offer in, can you move the next 30 to 60 days? I mean, That's good. That. That's good. Keep going with it. Okay, based on the research that you did, I mean, obviously you're calling me, so you probably know about what the house is going around here. Do you think yeah. it's priced at right? I just called you to see if you're interested. I mean, I don't even know if I want to look at you yet, but I do have a buyer. Good. Okay. That might put an offer in. Good. Well, so, are you, are you even serious about selling your house? Well, actually, I see. Well, I think you told more like you really want to go ahead and argue with me in regards to no, it. I told you you wanted my business or not. <laughs> you know, do you really want my business or not? Right. You know? Okay, so here we go. But, <laughs> no, but, he's definitely not motivated. He's not. No, he's it's not, not about, about being motivated. The yeah. thing is that if you listen to his tone, if somebody calls me the way he called, he just talked right now, uh -huh. I'm like, man, please. Is that true? <laughs> There's like really 2,500 people, true. you know. Some people like uh, very, very convenient for you to be very direct. They don't want but to... But the bottom... No, no, you but, can be, but, wait you can be the right, the line is, but you can be the right without who? being hostile. There's no reason for you who's to be Who's qualifying who on the call? Right. 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 Yeah, so it doesn't really... It, we don't care about that person. Right. Right. We have all the value. Okay. Right. So he's qualifying him. If he doesn't like it, then he can go somewhere. Because yeah. there's yeah. too many yeah. people that will. Yeah. To worry about the ones that won't. Yeah, right? So that's what I'm saying. It's not personal. No, no, no. It's, it's just not that personal. We're, we're looking for someone specific. If that person is not who we're looking for specifically, then we just we let them go. But let me ask you this, though. Will you really enter into an argument with a seller just because of price? Will you really be hostile? With a seller just because of price? It's not about the price. No. What is it about? I mean, how many houses do you have to sell at three hundred thousand dollars in order to achieve yeah. what a one million dollar home is going to give you? Yeah. You know. You, you would be the ideal client. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we're here to actually make a living, right? So why would you let a one point two million dollar home go yeah, away but if I had because? To put up with that was right. In terms of my advice, like you, I wouldn't want to work with them. Right. But now let I me ask you, say, on this specific client, okay, what is it that this client have said yet to this point to actually tell you, you know what, yeah, I don't want to work with you? It's nothing that he actually said. You were, you were interpreting his tone, that he took a tone with you. A tone is different than what is actually being said. Right. But, but this is the thing, hold on, hold in on, real hold. life, in a real life situation, because this is just basically <laughs> us, you know, right here right. BSing with each other. No, this is you know what right. I mean? I, but in a real life situation, let me tell you, you approach that client the way he approached it, you can kiss a shit goodbye. Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Nazareth, how many homes have you sold? Huh? How many homes have you sold? About four of them. Four? Four, yes. I mean, I'm not an expert. You've been licensed? I'm not an expert. I know, I know you're not. Yeah. Right. So what we're talking about, you said, uh, if how many 300,000 homes do you have to sell to equal $1.2 million home? Right. If you can't sell a one point two million dollar home, it would be better to sell homes at three hundred thousand dollars that you can sell. But you can learn to sell them. Though. That's what we're doing. Right. You're missing the point. But I personally don't agree that you have to come out of a seller with a very that's hostile, you, you know, that's, way that's, that's to do you that. Don't, you don't understand what we're doing. That's why. You don't understand. I'm teaching him defensive techniques. You don't understand what we're doing. So your focus is. Different are we learning to teaching. be hostile? No, no, no. You, I think the seller. Well, we're, we're, what we're doing is we're teaching, I'm teaching them how to handle hostile people. I'm mm -hmm. teaching them how to handle defensive techniques. Defensive you're, you're techniques, focusing, I understand it. Defensive right, right, techniques, right, I get right, that. Right, right, right. But you're, see, you're, you're still in the mindset of a realtor. We're talking about being a professional. You're focusing on trying to sell houses. We're focusing on solving problems. Okay. That's the difference. 
So you're looking at it from just one particular way. We're working on multiple skills and strategies here. Okay. Okay. So these, they've been coming, I'm teaching them skills and techniques, and what they're doing is something very specific. Okay. Okay. So we're going to continue with the hostel, and then let's see what's going on with that. No, the thing is, is that when he was asking you questions based on your attitude, the way you were coming across about your value. My attitude? I just matched. Yeah. My attitude. <laughs> You've been defensive. No, You've been defensive. You are, so he just matched whoever he is. Yeah, go ahead. You made a point earlier when you're dealing with a few thousand dollar customer as opposed to a one point seven. There are different personalities right. like that. Sometimes you are dealing with a more professional, educated person at one point seven. You mm -hmm. have different expectations. So therefore you have to massage it a little bit differently, but on the other side, you can't get so caught up in the tonality of the person that your ultimate goal is to sell your place. Uh, you have to take something personal out of it and, and look at it. Okay, what the end result is, and I want to get this. So yeah, but you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're talking about what is the first part of the script? You guys don't know how to build deals. This is why you're art. You guys are focused on the wrong thing because you don't know how to build deals. We're talking about how do how do you build a motivated, equitable deal? What's the first part of the script? A deal for my client. Right. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for the property. We're looking for ideal perfect client. When you understand the ideal perfect client profile, the technology behind that, you won't get wrapped up in the personality and in the tone and all that stuff. We know what we're looking for specifically. Okay? Yeah. All right. Thanks, Nazareth. Have a good seat. All right, let's come up. Um, Vanessa. Come up. No, you saw it. Now, you guys have to remember, you guys have to remember, see, that's another thing, too. You're getting all emotional. I was getting emotional. If I had a, um, a young man that called my home, yes, he's, the content is what he's saying, the content is very good. Yeah. And I want that information. At the end of it, I would not use him. I That's would fine. get his information, right. but I would not like to have his attitude. Like, his tonality was a little bit aggressive. Yeah. And I usually would get information, and I would not use that. That's okay, but you're not the ideal profile that he's working on. And all he's doing, he's matching the tone that he's getting back. So really, you're saying you're mad at yourself. No, I'm not mad at myself. I would get information. But his content, what he's trying to convey me the information, yeah. I would get that information, but I wouldn't. And, and, and mm -hmm. I would not use him. That's fine. I think it was the part where he said, but how would, he, I didn't even know he called him a working man. How would you know someone? Well, that's a takeaway. Yeah. That's a takeaway. See, that's no. Not when you see him personally. No, it's just that, you know, the phone, you know, it's just a lot of fun. It's just a call. Right. And sometimes they're very aggressive. And, you know, I just listen to them. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Fact, but again, I'm teaching you guys. I'm, you guys, you, uh, you understand something. You guys are taking it personal. It's not a personal business. This is a skill-based business. Go ahead. Also, I think, as in general, and I know I'm guilty of this, <laughs> in terms of call, we, uh, we attach or basically ascribe the things that irritate us or are, you know, oh, I would be offended if somebody Nine o'clock at night or whatever, right. and we ascribe our values to these unknown people, mm -hmm. and I think we know too much. We know more than enough to be dangerous, and like this is just play. Yeah. So you know. yeah, but these things happen. No, no, I understand yeah. that, but I, I just yeah. think that we're just we have to understand yeah. that you know we're going to areas that that you haven't learned yet. These are not skills that you've learned yet. It doesn't matter. If, why are they getting upset? If you're asking a logical, hold on, hold on. If you're asking logical questions and another person gets upset, guess where you're at? You're already dealing with the illogical. You're, you're already dealing with someone who's illogical. So when you're like, oh yeah, I, I sell $1.2 million, not if you, not if you take an overpriced listing, the market's not going to pay for it. 
We'd rather have an overpriced listing that sounds good versus a deal that's actually going to close. Because even if you get the listing, you still have to do everything that's involved in the transaction. And if you can't get along with this person, if you can't have reasoning with this person, if they weren't not cooperating, you're not going to close the deal anyway. They're going to fight you every Don't let everyone hear you what you're saying. Like, you guys are thinking in the mindset of scarcity, too. Like, you guys are too scared to throw some deals away. You think every deal is going to be 100%. Why are you thinking that? That's a good point. I'm teaching you guys how to operate from abundance. Mm -hmm. And you'll have abundance, you will definitely have abundance when you know exactly what you're looking for. And when you have your lead sources, they should, if you order leads, they come in the email box every morning. There's millions and millions and millions of dollars that come back on the market every single day. But if you don't have that information, then you don't know how many deals are, how many opportunities are available. Right? So we're operating from abundance. We're not operating from scarcity. So let's go. Now you're going to, I'm not telling them what to be. I can say, okay, I want you to be motivated. No, I want you to be able to handle any situation, right? The, uh, you'll see the energy will change in the room, and they'll turn into the ideal perfect client. Now we've called several people, right? Andre, you remember what, uh, the lady said she's paying 1.5%. I, I called her first, and hung up on her. A few days later, Andre called. He's like, yeah, you're a joke. We called her back like four or five days later. She went from 1.5% to 2.5%. Because the market started wearing down on her. The responses that she was getting wasn't working, so she had to increase what she was going to offer for commission. Right? Okay, so let's go. Now, you call, you call Vanessa. Yeah. Hi, Vanessa. This is Brian. I was calling about the property I went through three weeks. Did you get it sold yet, or are you still accepting offers? Uh, no, I'm still accepting offers. Great. What's the best price you want to accept? I have to have at least seven fifty. Seven fifty, okay. How many offers did you have when it was on the market? Uh, about one, two, I think. Two. What was the highest offer? Uh, seven thirty. <clears throat> seven thirty. That's six hundred twenty thousand dollars below the asking price. Why didn't you accept that? Because, um, because my house is worth seven fifty. Wow. Here we go. Ooh, you hear this right here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's. Now she's in trouble. Uh -huh, yeah. We know what to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> if, that, if that was true, what would have happened? Oh, if that was true, what would have happened? Oh, so so right here we go. We can go right to work. Uh -huh. Well, I could go hard on her, or I could go easy. Just match your tone. Ooh, match your tone. 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 Match your uh, 60, so I think um, my house is at least worth 750. Okay, so where is she at on the, on the right up on price? Where is she at on the chart? Yeah, she's, she's there at her opinion of the neighbor's house. Yeah. So that's one more. Yeah. Okay, so let's keep going. But do you, I want you to see what Brian is doing. Now, Brian had no experience and no sales experience. And he's, he's, he's turning into a beast because he's taking everything that I'm giving him, he's applying, he's studying it, and he's applying it on the phone even. Okay? So he doesn't have a lot of bad habits to annoy. So that's one of the parables. There's multiple. That's why we're doing this so you guys can come up with your own. There isn't really one, one, but use your style, use your personality, but just learn that these are different ways. To destroy the argument. That's confrontational, even I'll go nicer. It should be right. Nice, I would say. No, if you're going to create confrontation or if you're not going to create confrontation. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I want you guys to be able to be everything, not just nice all the time. You're programmed to be overly nice, and, oh, that and that's, that's ignorance. Right? Wait, niceness is ignorance? Yes. If you look up the, edit, if you look up the etymology of nice, it does allude to ignorance. If you look at the etymology of ignorance, it does allude back to nice because if someone is being overly nice and you don't know why, mm -hmm. you not knowing why that person is being so nice to you is a form of that's where it creates but, the ignorance. But I'm not about, yeah, nice. Okay, but here let me tell you why. Here's ignorance right here. A lot of people think that by being nice, a person will like them back or give them what they want. That's no, ignorance. I, people try to get what they want by being nice. That's ignorance. It's not the real thing. 
it's because you know what you are overly nice yeah that, that's going to give some warning right but what i want you to do is i want you to actually look at the definition and look at the etymology the history of the word where it originates from and then you have a better understanding okay all right okay. let's go all right well what about the other houses that sold did you did you check that uh, they were around the same price, but, same price. Mm -hmm. but I mean, I think I can um, stick it out for a little bit longer, don't you? Being that they got a higher price. Well, I don't know what I need to do. Hmm? Okay, let's, let's pick it back up again. So I said, um, I said, um, well, being that the other half, my neighbor got 760 mm -hmm. and I only got 10 blue. I think I could stick it out, don't you? I mean, the market's going up, right? All right, so what do we know right here? Where, what are we talking about? When she says what she just said, what are we, what are we entering into? No more. You see how it is? It's no matter what question you ask, you can figure out what are the three components of putting together a solid, motivated, equitable deal? Motivation, price, and commission. That's all you need to look for inside the deal. Motivation, price, and commission. I'm willing to stick it out, is that what you're saying? If you're, yeah, if you're willing to stick it out, maybe you're not that motivated. If you didn't take a deal for $20,000 less than your price, maybe you're not that motivated. Right? So through, through, the, through the logical questions, we can use deductive reasoning. Why'd you say that's, you said 740, right? 750. Yeah, 750. That's what I wanted. And I got an offer for 740. My neighbor got 760 for Well, that's only $10,000. Does that really make a difference on what you're going to use the. Oh. How did you say that? Say that again? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, well, basically, we wanted to stay for just 10000 Yeah, what I'm trying to say was 10000 I mean, that's, that's only $10,000. Do you really need 10000 to go where you need to go? Well, yeah. I was kind of hoping they get more, being that my neighbor got, you know, more than Okay, so now what do we know? Much it's worth. Are you, really are you really concerned know. about what your neighbor got for your house, or what, what, your so house you have to figure out where, where, are you, where are you moving to, why, what do you need to make your move? It's really more of the angle we should be going into. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll just go with the, uh, okay, well, that sounds great, maybe you I'll check on the price. We can do that. We can meet and we can get together and check on the price. But if I do put an offer in, will you be able to move it in the next 30 or 60 days? Um, yeah, it depends if I have somewhere to go. Oh, okay, so now what do we know? She doesn't know where she to, go. Right. to go. Is that a big problem in someone's house? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But is it also a big opportunity for yeah. us? Yes. Yep. What's the power of close formula? If I can find solve a problem for you. If I can solve your problem, will you let me represent you? If I can, now we, now we know what the problem is. Say, let's hear it. Yeah. You can say that like that. Do you guys see the strategy here? So we're asking our questions, we're using pure logic. And then as we start picking apart their, where they're, how they're building their argument, we can see what's really going on. Are they really motivated? Are they really reasonable about the price? Um, do they even really have equity? That's really what we really want to know. What's the most important thing that we want to know? Right. <laughs> the most important thing we want to know is if they have equity. If someone has high motivation, that's not enough. Because they might not have the equity to, to sell the home, pay the commission, and make the move. So number one is we need to know they have enough equity to do it. So see what you know, now you can create your questions based around what you really need to know to put the deal together. Is this making sense to you guys? Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. All right, give me a hand. Oh. All right. Who wants to come up? Come on, Louie. <laughs> Louie and Mario. Yeah, it's in the back. Huh? 
practice. Just practice. So I just want you guys to what Mario's you guys nice. to become clear. Nice. You guys what you become nice. clear about how to make this business work and how to put deals together, it becomes very easy. Say what's up. But there's just so much confusion. How'd you like that uh, I'm actually someone else in this room? But again, we're talking about that. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about um, but see it's all about you. If you guys were at the boot camp your sales style is a representation of who you are. It's not something that you do, it's a way. It's who you are. So if you're the type of person that always rub people the wrong way, you piss people off, that's, that's you. Or if, if you're the type of person that every time you talk to somebody and you're real sensitive and you tend to get all upset, then that's mm. it's you. It's you. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's really about learning yourself. Mm -hmm. And learning through learning yourself, you can learn other people. Which means that if you know very well that if you do a certain type of tone it's going to irritate or piss somebody off to do that or if you want to get rid of them or if you want to stop them in a tracks then maybe you might want to do that you want to be able to do whatever you need to do you want to be flexible right let's go all right Ludi, you call mario hi mario this is Ludi. um i'm calling about your home in walker street uh have you sold it yet or are you still getting offers oh i'm still taking offers Really? <laughs> so what do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> this is it. What do yeah. you want to know? Yeah. What do you want to know? What's the best price? Yeah, what's the best price mm -hmm. that you will take okay. for you? Uh, we were looking at 525. 525? Yeah. And where did you come up with that price? Uh, you know, we saw, uh, we kind of got it off Azula. Azula? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, are you um, fixed on that price or are you flexible? I mean, we're a little flexible. Yeah. All right, but I want you to ch That's challenge, right. remember, how'd you come up with that price? Whatever they say is going to be their premise. They're going to give that to you. To, they want you to accept it, believe what they're saying. Okay. So we want to challenge that. Okay. So are you familiar? how are you going to challenge that? No, 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 don't coach her. I want her to get it. How are you going to challenge the Z okay. his estimate? And he said he wanted, how much is that? 525. And you got it out of system, right? Out mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. Zillow. Okay. Um, yeah, That's all right. Yeah. What is what is Zillow? How do they determine the price? Yeah. Um, I'm asking you. No? How does Zillow determine the price? By comparing both homes without knowing what if they really are, the condition and everything. Exactly. Right. So, knowing that that's how they determine it, you have to strategically ask them a question so they can realize that that's not. An accurate price. Okay, so are you basing your um, price on an opinion, or would you like the real facts of what the price is worth? Uh, you call this worth? Let's see what. Yeah, I would like the facts. Yeah, sure. so I would love to bring you the, the stats of, of, of the market of uh, marketability in the area, and when is a good time to do? Um, uh, how can you tell me the price of how much on uh, the market sale is I, I could, I would much rather meet with you personally, so I can show you what the stats are, and... Okay, so let's, let's stop right here. Mm -hmm. You have to remember, frames and threads, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, the price... Is not really the most important. The motivation and the equity and the reason why they want to sell is the most important, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So if they're like, well, if they're like stuck on the price and like, well, can you just tell me the price or can you just tell me right now? I can, but let me ask you, when you, if you would have sold your home, where are you moving to? Or if I get your home sold in the next 30, 60 days, are you able to move that quickly? Do you already have another home picked out? He said he was flexible. Mm -hmm. It could be, right? So now we have to figure out how do you keep the energy up in the conversation? We have to talk to appeal to the greeds, the needs, and the speeds, right? So if the price isn't doing it, then let's talk about the speed. Let's see if we can get the energy back up to the speed, right? Like that. After I get this home sold, where are you going to go? Let's try that. Okay. So if I sell your house in the next 30, 60 days, um, would that be sufficient time for you to move? Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Now set the appointment. 
so late. What is a good time to meet? Uh, the price How about is tomorrow around 7? Okay, so you see what happened? When we were talking about the price, energy was too flat. When we talked about the speed, it went up, then you set the appointment. You always set the appointment on the high note, emotionally. Did you guys catch that? Yeah. Okay, well, they were just talking about the price, and she's like, I can come by and bring you the facts and the data. And he was like, well, can you just come on the phone? The energy was low. He, he wasn't excited about talking about it or meeting with it. We switched it around and said, if I can get your home sold in the next 30, 60 days, would that be enough time for you to move? His energy went up, and then we closed for the appointment because the energy's high. So you're saying time is his, his, his weak spot there? It's not necessarily a weak spot. It's just no, that because he said yes. people are always going to make their buying decisions on a high emotion. Mm -hmm. Right? Right, right. You're right. So you always go for, that's what the chess pose is about. Just, what's, what we said, if I, uh, when's a good time to meet for about five to ten minutes, right? If they're not ready, they'll say you keep going, but you keep getting that little test code. But you want to do it when they're on a high emotional point. So if we're going to add energy to the conversation, greed, need, if I brought you a full price offer, would you consider it? Yes. When's a good time to be for about five to ten minutes to discuss how we can do that? They're going to meet with you because you're, you're setting the appointment right after a high emotion. So what is it that built and brings that emotion back up? You said greed, greed? needs, mm -hmm. and speed. Thank you. Adds energy to the conversation. So you guys have to be aware. What's, what's the energy like in my conversation? Is it dead? Is it not going anywhere? Is it flat? Is it low? How can I add more energy to the conversation? Right? Yeah. Give him a hand. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Come on, Cheryl. Come on up. Stay up. So it's a lot of work. If you want to be in real estate, it's a lot of work. That's why you have to have high goals because... Most of the times you're not going to do it if you don't have enough reason of a big enough goal payout to do the work. And then what ends up happening is you say mediocre. You say low average. So yeah, I'm working you guys, but it's only going to be worth it if you have big enough goals because I can get you there to make the money that you want to accomplish your goals, but you got to do the work. It's not going to be easy, but I can get you on that path. But it's all based on your, so now we have to do another thing, which is what are your goals? Do your goals drive you enough to do this type of work, okay? All right, Mario, call Cheryl. Hello. Cheryl, this is Mario. I'm calling about your home on Main Street. Did you get that sold yet, or are you still accepting offers? Oh, Mario, I'm still accepting offers. Oh, you wonderful. Buyers? Yeah, I do, actually. You're working with a few qualified buyers. What's the best price you want to sell your home for? Uh, well, I have it listed at 650 You have it listed at 650 Yeah. Okay, great. So I'll go ahead and give your agent a call. No, ask if it's listed. Oh, Don't make the assumption. Okay. Just question it, right? Okay. Ask him. Okay. So, oh, it's on the. Is it on the market at the moment? Um. Well, actually, this is expired. 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 Oh, okay. See, I'm so oh, used to the okay. sale by owner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but even, it, but even, if, even if it wasn't okay. for sale by owner, so you can still ask the question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Because if for somebody was like, no, I haven't listened with an agent yet, I'm just advertising it myself. They'll tell you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So, oh, do you, are you working with a real estate agent at the moment? Um, no, I'm not. Okay, wonderful. And what's the best question you want to sell your home for? Uh, well, I was asking for six fifty when it was on the market. Six fifty. Yeah. On the market. And did you get any prices up at that point? At six fifty. Uh, yes, they were low balls. Oh God, how low were they? Well, I'm confused. Like Are you asking seven fifty or six fifty? I said six fifty. Six fifty. Six fifty. Okay. So five fifty is a low ball offer okay. that I was seeing. Okay. Five fifty is that the highest one you got? Yeah, that's the highest one. Oh God! All right, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so could you bring could you bring me something? Now let me just pause right here because okay. uh, Nazareth did make a good point, right? As far as do you really want to argue about the price? We now we've talked about this. Right? Um, but that's why uh, the books are so important because I'm going to keep repeating the same stuff, right? So if you guys are new, you guys need the books and you guys need to get caught up. But you don't have to necessarily argue the price because if we have the time constraints and we have the equity, then we can, they'll, they will become into a logical place and then they'll come down on the price. The price is not real, it's, it's imagined in their mind. When is someone, when, at what situation does someone make a real decision? When they're running out of time, and they really want to, have, if somebody has a, their 
perfect house that they want in the school district that they want, it's in escrow and they have 10 more days to get into escrow with their home or they're going to lose that perfect house. Are they going to be more motivated? Yeah. Be Especially if they have equity, right? So does the price matter necessarily? No, they want to make the move. So the price is, you have to understand it's, it's an illusion. It's imagined what they think that they want. How do we get someone to make a buying decision? Who to make a decision? You can't. The time, the situation can though. Time constraints, running out of time, and they have to have equity so that they can be flexible on what the real price is. The real price at the end of the day is going to be what someone's willing to offer them that can actually afford to uh, buy the house. Right. That's one way, but you see, but now that you sat down, all these things are coming to you, but when you're up here and you're in, actually in it, it's a lot difficult, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Different perspective. Why, why is it? <laughs> why is it more? Because <laughs> <laughs> huh? like when you see the checkers, you see all the plays, but they don't when they're playing it. Outside mm -hmm. perspective, right? Uh, yes. Right. But it's just, the, it's, just the, it's just performance. It's, it's when you're performing in front of people and everything's on the line. <laughs> it is. Oh. It is. That's why we're doing it this way, so that when you get on the phone or you actually get in front of somebody, you're comfortable. You're able to perform under the pressure or with people watching you, right? So, where are we at? She told me that. Okay, so she said 550, she's asking 650. Yeah. Remember, we have to start making interpretations, uh, translations, and meanings. If the highest offer she got was hundred thousand dollars, what she has, what what could we kind of start making reasonable assumptions? Well, we know that all expires overpriced, right? Or for simple, a lot of for simple is overpriced. But what else? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. How do you, like, I mean, you wouldn't say this, but how do you end up $100,000 overpriced? So this, I don't want you, don't want you to go, but I want you to talk about the price. Okay. All right. But just realize that the price is tied to the motivation. So you have two options. You can talk about the price, or you can talk about really, where does she really want to go? Why is she selling her house? Which one do you want to go with? I would go with the motivation. Okay, so let's do that. Oh, so you got 550. Okay, I got you. So if you had sold a home back when you had it on the market, where are you planning on going tonight? Well, I'm spending on me and my family spending on moving to Texas. Texas? That's a pretty big move. What takes you to Texas? Uh, we have family members down here and kind of tired of California. Yeah, I don't want you to turn your body. I just want you to amplify your voice. Okay. Uh, I'll go back to the Texas one. Um, oh, to Texas. What takes you to Try to make your voice go past the wall. Okay. Um, Texas. Texas, what takes you to Better. Texas? Better. <laughs> I have family down there in Texas. Oh, you got family, so it's going to be like a homecoming for you. Oh, yeah, it is. They can't wait until I make this transition. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Well, hey, if I can get you as much net out, out of your property as a sale of it and get you to Texas in the next 30 to 60 days, would you let me represent you? You know, sure. I would let you, I would let you come by and let me take a look at what you have to offer. Great. When would be a good time for most convenient for you? Um, tomorrow at noon. Perfect. I'll see you there. Yeah. So, but did you guys notice when I had him raise his voice, the, en the energy dynamic changed, right? Yeah. So yeah. these are those little nuances of the real sales conversation. It's not about what you're saying. It's about what you're focusing on. It's what you're doing to create an impact and the energy exchange inside the conversation. Along with the roller coaster ride that he gave me his tonality, the way he was able to kind of, oh, really cool, right? Breaking up that monotone. Okay. Yeah, because he did. What I noticed was when he was low, I was low. Right. Then he got up, and then I yeah, got up. I felt that. I felt that. <laughs> so now we're talking about how can you change the emotions of the other person right. by changing your tone? They'll respond more differently as well, right? So that's why when we're doing the defensive technique, that's you guys don't understand me. We've been working on something for a while, and Brian specifically has been working on it. But what Cheryl say is true. It's true. So 
it's yourselves is you. It's how you are, what you're putting out, the type of energy, how you're feeling, right? Remember when we were focusing on mastering the intro? And I had you think about someone that you felt comfortable with and, and then you would light up and smile and the tone would change when you're asking to speak to the person. It's the same thing. It's what you're putting out is what you're going to be getting back. Okay? Give them a hand. <laughs> Margaret, come up. Uh, Cheryl, where are you running off to? <laughs> you ran fast. Too. <laughs> come on, Margaret. Come on, Margaret. Everybody stand up for two seconds. For two seconds. Let's stand up. Go on. Yikes. Five, ten seconds. Let's change the energy a little bit. All right. So this week, practice what we're doing in here, okay? When somebody is putting forth the premise, I want you to validate and authenticate. Validate and authenticate. That's a form of challenging them. But it's not really a challenge, you're just asking them to validate what they're saying. Or, you know, authenticate what they're saying, right? And if you will do this, you will start dominating the sales conversation. And you don't have to be mean, angry, or have a bad tone. You're just asking powerful questions. And it's going to force you to do the same when you put forth something, right? Okay. I want you guys to work on this with this that this week. Let's go. Cheryl, you're going to call Margaret. Okay. What are you working on right now? Um, His bow's expired. What do you want to work on? Okay. You're okay, expired. Out. No, I did. Expire. You know about expired? Okay. Here we go. Ring, ring. Hi, this is Cheryl. This is Margaret. I'm calling about your property on 123 Main Street. Did you get it sold or are you still accepting offers? Uh, well, no, I didn't get it sold. I'm still accepting offers. Okay. Um, how much, um, what type of offers did you no, get? No, no, sure. You're supposed to be calling her. That's yeah. what I was. Oh, okay. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hi. 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 Wait, let me see. Now, if you call me, then you're going to be asking me questions. If I call you, then I'm going to be asking you questions. Right? That's why you guys don't do the telephone ring. Just start your intro, and they'll, they'll fall right into it. Okay. Hi, Margaret. This is Cheryl. Come by your house on 123 Main Street. Did okay. you get it okay. sold? Okay. There's not going to be no confusion right now. <laughs> okay. It's, right. Deep. it's 2 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready, Margaret? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Margaret, this is Cheryl. I was talking about your home on Main Street. Is it still available? Yes, it is. Great. Um, could you tell me? I had it all set up with It's all right. Just, just, <laughs> just think about, just think about, but I'm, I'm giving you guys a tool to do when you don't know what to do. What do you, where, there's only three things you really need to know that you really want to know. Okay. Hey Margaret, hi, this is Shaw. I was talking about your home on Main Street. Are you still accepting offers on that property? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Um, I was in the area and I have some buyers that I'm working with and I wanted to know uh, a little bit about the property. want to know what exactly yeah, so what you'd like to know. We yeah. worked on this. We don't want to go that route anymore. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay, so... So you'd be sleeping in class. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're paying attention. You look like the best. Sit up here in the front. The best place to hide is right in plain sight, right? You're right in the front. But when it comes down to us, I'm going to you're not paying attention. No, okay, I'm not so paying attention. Here we go. So okay, now. What's the best Okay, well... What's the best price? In, what's the best price you ask? But see, you, know, you guys have to be clear. Okay, so if we say, "I'm calling about your house. Did you get it sold here? So it's offers. I'm still accepting offers, right? That's what we want to know. First of all, we want to know if they, if they still want to sell. Okay. All right. Then, if we know that somebody wants to sell, then where do we want to go? Yeah. Hey, Margaret. This is Cheryl. I was talking about your home on Main Street. Is it still available? Yes, it is. Great. Uh, once you once you get your home sold, where will you be moving next? Well, I'll be moving back to New York. 
Oh, okay, New York. I like New York. Uh, when would that be? Well, it depends on the offer I receive. Oh, okay. If I bring you a strong qualified buyer, we can do. No, hold on, hold on. You guys have to be listening to what's being said and make an interpretation. So she says it depends on the offer that I see received, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What what kind of assessment? Oh, what yeah, kind of assessment yeah. can we make from that? Okay. Well, asking, well, no, I want you to answer. What kind of assessment can you make from that? When you guys come up here, I want you to do the work. But I'm, I'm happy. She's working right now. Let her work. Sorry. What kind of assessment do you think you can make when, just by what she said? That she's moving to New York. She said based on depends on the price that I get. Okay. How much is she willing to accept? Yeah, but what does that tell you about her motivation? Um. If someone says, yeah, I'll sell my house for, for a million dollars, or someone worth 800. Okay. Um, what does that tell you? No, it tells me that they're not really motivated. It's, it's possible. That they're not motivated. It's possible, right? Okay. So if we can see sense that that might be possible, we might want to just test that a little bit more so we don't waste our time. Okay. Right? So she said, well, it depends on the, on the offer that I get. Okay, so what's the offer you're looking for? I'm ready to receive eight twenty five. Oh, okay, eight twenty five. So uh, the net, what is how did you come up with that price? Well, I got it um I had an uh, an appraisal on this property a year ago and um I also got the Zillow. They give a lot of good All right, um, hold on now. So it's just starting to build different things, but we gotta address these ones. Yeah. Okay. So what happened so, with the appraisal? The appraisal has a site. So, Margaret, did you know that the, the appraisal is only good for six months? And uh, well, that's <laughs> your right? Just remember the sales conversation is a question. So, you can give them a statement and then turn around with another question, right? So, you know the appraisal is only good for about uh, three to okay, six so, months. So, Margaret, uh, you know the appraisal is only good for six months. So let me ask you, uh, if I brought some pumps by to show you what the property is valued at now, would you be interested in taking a look at that? Sure. Okay, great. So tomorrow around 2? She's not responding. It means that she's not feeling in your communication. Okay. okay. So that means you have, so to, you have to adjust your communication mm -hmm. because it's not effective. It's not. Okay. Right. So Margaret. Would you be interested if I brought you some pumps by to see what your property is worth right now as right now today? Yes, you can come by. Um, what time is a good time? Um, two o'clock. Okay, let's do five. Okay, five would be great. But before we hang up, let me ask: once you once you get the home sold, where will you be moving next? I, I don't know if you were listening to me. I said mm -hmm. I'm going to move back to New York. Oh, okay. I didn't hear that. <laughs> okay, great. So um, I'll see you tomorrow. At yeah. Five. Get focused now. Today at five. What's happening? You need to take a nap. Get focused. Today at five. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm just being real with you guys. I don't. I don't care about your feelings. I'm telling you guys the truth. If you guys want to make money in your business, you have to be able to focus and pay attention. Because that means that you're doing things in your business all day long that's not producing real results and you're not even aware of it. What makes the difference between someone who is closing deals, putting deals together, and someone that's not? What makes the difference? What makes the difference between someone that starts putting deals together and starts making deals happen? What is the difference? It's 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 you gotta figure it out, right? But if you take something serious, when you when you take something really serious, what 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 do you do when you take something really serious? You fo you commit, you focus, and and you take action, right? But you focus on what you're doing and how you're doing it. So that's your business. If you guys will focus and, and really focus and commit, you will make a difference in your business. Right? So I'm just giving you guys a tool, but it's up to you guys to do it based on your goals. Um, what's your name again? Charlie. Come on up. 
Is it Charlie? Charlie. The key? It's right there in the back door. Come on up, Charlie. This is the second time I see you, but I don't have any screws. Well, you told me you wanted to make one, right? I got it. Okay, okay so I'm going to teach you how to make one. How do you What's your name? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Just remember, like, if you guys, so if you said that you want to make money, then who do you guys say you have to take action, right? Yeah. Take action. It's all right to make mistakes or to go through the learning process. This is how you do it. Okay? Charlie and Armand. Okay. All right, so Charlie, yeah. I want you to call Armand. Okay. Okay. We will call expired or for so loud. Expired. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to back so you guys can hear each other's voice. Hi, Armand. This is Charlie. Oh, no. Bert, shout out to his services. Uh, I'm glad to see you are still at 15 offers from your property. Hey, Charlie. Yeah, I am. How you doing? Uh, great, great. Thank you. Good. Thanks for asking. Um, so I wanted to uh, ask you, um, uh, now, what do you want to know? That's right. Yeah, that's what I asked you. So I wanted to, uh, wanted to ask you, uh, um, what's the highest offer that you, uh, I'm sorry, did you say, did, did you accept any of, did you receive any offers while you had a list? Um, I've only received a few offers, yeah, but not, not, nothing that came to my taste. Uh, really? What's the highest, uh, offer that you received? Uh, the highest offer I received was 625. 625. Okay. okay. And what would be the, 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 the lowest that you would take? The lowest I would take, in reality, I was looking for more like 675. 675. And how did you arrive to that, to that, to that price? Um, really, I was looking around Zillow, just local sales, just local people what, what the market's been going for. Okay. Do you have any, any, any properties that, uh, for that price? Around that, around that area? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. I go to all the open houses and try to stay on top of them. Okay, so we're getting a lot of something that we can knock down, right? Mm -hmm. What do we? What can we knock down here? Well, uh, so is, you know, we just want to get our competitor. I mean, our our competitor. Right. That's okay. So that means you need to really understand how is it work and the valuation work. Right. right, right. Now, he also said something else. What else did he say? We asked him if he had any other houses with him. Right, yeah. What did he say? He said, yeah, he said, you want to go up now? He said, he's going to do that. Okay, but what do we know about open houses and actual listings? What are they facts? No. So they can't, they can't build their price on something that has a close, right? Right. So that's facts. Okay. So how would, how would we challenge that? Okay. Did, did you know that the project, the whole thing you can see in the open houses are not actual sales, they're not selling yet? Well, I'm not exactly sure on that, but I'm trying to get my money's worth, of course. You know what I'd like to do for us? I would like to uh, set up an appointment to, to show you uh, the comparables that are within the area and uh, uh, similar to your house. Would that be of interest to you? Um, yeah, definitely. That, that sounds like something we could do. Okay, you know that uh, uh, I have available tomorrow at 4 or uh, uh, the day after at 6? So the day after it's six on five. Okay, so it's not bad. Not bad at all. No, I think it's throughout a lot because you wouldn't okay. remember what I'm saying is you have to look at it. So this is a, this is a challenge that we all have. You're judging yourself. Yeah. You went from being brand new to you just made progress and growth. But you're not looking at your progress and growth, you're just looking at what you felt maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you have to always give yourself so credit for the growth that you're making because every little step takes you one step closer. Yeah. So what I want you to work on, Charlie, is work on your script, right? Start working on your script. Are you making calls? No. Are you doing something for you? Alright. Are you coming back to the 6 to 8 session? Um, no. Uh, if 
not, next week we're going to be publishing this called Black Book. Okay. But be ready, though. I, I need to get your book. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. All right, this is going to be the last role play, and then we're going to wrap it up until the 16th session. All right, so um, with Armand, you call Will. Hey, Will, this is Armand. I'm calling you about your property at 123 Main Street. Are you still accepting offers? No, I haven't closed yet. Yes, I'm still accepting offers. Is that right? What's what's the price here? What's the best price we're looking to get on that? 545. 545? Well, what made, what made you come up with that price? I just recently had this appraised about three months ago. Three months ago? Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's about right. So, well, have you received any offer for that around yeah, that so price? Let's go back here. So, what, you know, what you asked me to say is appraised about three months ago, what did you ask me? I asked them what you What do you say? What do you say? Okay, and what he said, what he said before that? He asked me, he said, you know, he did his intro. He said, are you still for the offer? He said, yeah, yeah. And then, then what happened? He said, when you asked me, what's the price of the book? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So we have to make we have to make the assessments. You know, is it for sub or fifth book? Expired. I mean, expired. Expired, right? So, is that that's kind of interesting that an expired would order an appraisal for most of the things that were doing an expert sub or something. So let's find out. So what what made you order an appraisal three books ago? Well, go on. Tell me what what made you order an appraisal three months ago. No, make a long story short, the buyer, potential buyer that I had was in the school of development and school of development and she did not want to back out of the appraisal and still do it, so I thought it would continue forward. So you're definitely a discerner to sell, right? Is that what you're talking about? Well, let's make an assessment right here. What's going on right now? If it's, if it's, if it's expired and the deal fell out of escrow and someone was willing to pay 545, that might mean that we have our previous to this one back in 545, right? Or why why did the buyer why did it fall out of escrow? Why did it fall out of escrow? Because it might have fallen out of escrow. Who knows? We gotta find out. We gotta ask. But why why did it fall out of escrow? Why did it fall out of escrow? So that probably means that the value is still good, but they just have the issue. So if we would list the same price, we probably can sell it. Because we have an appraisal to justify the value, right? So does it mean that it's expired as soon as it's sell out? Well, he's calling because if you get an expired listing on your lead sheet, that means that it's expired on the MLS. Well, sure, but like if the price is good, right? And if someone was willing to pay that price, does that mean right after it's sell out of escrow, does that mean it's expired as well? Is that just a happy coincidence? Well, you have to look at by the so You have to know by by looking at the, the expiration of the expiry. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to just find out what it is. But if we're just taking the information that we have, we can start making assessments, mm -hmm. right? They ask that as well. But this is what we're doing. We're just figuring out what questions should we ask to figure out how to make sure all our assessments. All right? All right. So where do you where do you want to go? So why didn't you resist? So we'll tell me again, why why didn't you resist once you fell right out? The information is that it's easily located in the South of City, so it's not just complications with the agent, right? Okay, so what do you know right now? Does it sound like a pretty good lead? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jump all over it. Yeah. Jump all over it. Close it. Close it. Close it. So tell me, if I was able to get you, sell you your house in 30 to 60 days, would you, would you let me represent you? Yes, I certainly would. All right. 
When's a good time that we can meet so I can talk to you? You're going to work on your closing, yeah. right? That's okay. Go do it again. Try again. <coughs> um, When's a good time to meet for about five to ten minutes? When's a good time to meet for about five to ten minutes so I can walk through this? What'd you say? When's a good time to meet for about five to ten minutes? Just try it. When's a good time to meet so we can talk for about five to ten minutes? Okay, how does it sound? All right, good man. All right, so we'll be back at, at 6 o'clock, 6 a.m. All right, did you guys? All right, so I want you guys to work on the exercises. If you have questions about it, just give me a call. Everybody sign in? Yeah. Everybody sign in? Okay, good. All right. Um, now, we also have lenders here, too. If you have questions about financing and lending and all that stuff, like which I, I didn't contribute. Raphael. Raphael? I'm in which I. Okay, yeah. So these are guys that, um, they teach like how I graduated. They actually give you real information. They don't hold back. They, they teach you exactly how to calculate that data ratio, how to look at the new test, and the transparency, and, um, you know, what they can afford to purchase very easy. We'll be back at six o'clock, six to eight. In your next class, what is it?